modern fiction lists with his latest book, A Pirate Looks at 50. Please welcome the most laid back man in the universe, Jimmy Buffett. so much for coming. It's a pleasure to be Great here. Great to have you on the program. This is, a, this is an exciting uh, thing. You're on the, the top of the fiction and the nonfiction bestseller list. Did you ever think as a kid that anything like this would ever happen to Absolutely you? Absolutely not, no. Um, I, I wanted to write before I uh, got sidetracked into the evil world of rock and roll, but... Mm -hmm. uh, the devil's music. Devil music, you bet. Yeah. It's in there. God bless devil music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, no, I did it. You know, my mother wanted me uh, to be a southern writer, so... Uh, I kind of wanted to do that, and I got sidetracked for 20 years of rock and roll, and then I decided to write. Were you a, were you a good student as a kid? No, I was terrible, and uh, I was a Catholic student as well. Ouch. Yeah. You know that one. <laughs> Catholic, yeah. Catholic and Southern, it was, boy, there's some weird mixtures going on down there and that. So uh, I guess the first thing that I wanted to, after that list came out, relate to is my English teacher that I made all D's in to say, nah, 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 so. <laughs> You shouldn't be using national television to go nee, 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 no, nee, 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 your old teacher. If you, if you knew Brother Colin, you would. You know? uh, <laughs> well, you know what's funny is that you do have this reputation as being this incredibly laid-back guy. You're sort of the, uh, the, the, the poster boy for, for laying back and enjoying life. Kicking back, right? Kicking back. And I was thinking to myself, that's a lot of pressure. Because <laughs> it is, because you can't freak out. You can't. If you're at the end of the DMV line and you got someplace else you got to be, Jimmy Buffett cannot go, people, come on, let's go! <laughs> I don't like lines, you're right, I, but you just kind of, you know, you kind of take a couple of breaths and you don't freak out, yeah. Do you walk around holding a margarita? Is that something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, if you had as many bought for you or offered to you as I have, you know, I kind of... That must get actually way. tiring. Wherever you go, people are bringing... If, if you check into the hospital, the nurse would be having <laughs> a margarita on <laughs> That's true. It's I'm having an operation. Now, leave me alone. No, usually they put tapes on the gurney with you. I, I had that happen. I woke up from surgery, and there was a demo tape of a song. Oh, they want you to discover them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, speaking of songs, Cheeseburger in Paradise. I've always admired the song Cheeseburger in Paradise because <laughs> I've thought, who else would write a song about their love affair with a cheeseburger? Well, it was, you know, songs come to you on their spur of the moment things, so... Uh, Were you really hungry at the time? Was, <laughs> <laughs> What's the inspiration here? I was very hungry. I, now, what about the, uh, can we say this on the air, the, the, the title of this song? Yes. You can. Uh, you, one of your songs... My mother does not like this song. She doesn't like this song. Uh, Gee, I wonder about. why your mother doesn't like, why? why don't we get drunk and screw? <laughs> What's your problem with that song? If, you're, if your mom's in the audience, do you, do you not sing that song? No, because uh, it's on the list that I call the list of songs I have to play or get killed at the show. And so it's definitely on that list. And my mother winces a little bit. But, uh, you know, that was a controversial song when I wrote it. And, you know, then came rap. So I'm kind of in the clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those tame oldies it's a, now. It's a very piece of Disney trash. Yeah. You know? <laughs> They're playing it now at the theme park. Uh, can you hang on one second? Yes. We're going to do a commercial I break. Can. We'll have more with Mr. Jimmy Buffett in just a second, so stick around. <laughs> Your assignment to find magic and the old Navy. Everybody, uh, we are back sitting here with Mr. Jimmy Buffett. Uh, let's talk, we were just talking in the commercial break, actually, about your concerts, which are very unusual because there are many performers who attract people to their shows, fans that like to dress up in, in funny costumes. <laughs> but, but you, you actually have fans that show up at your concerts and they bring sets with them and construct elaborate sort of sets. Oh, they create yeah. their own little world. The parrot heads, God love them. Any out there? Yeah, I knew that would be a couple out there. Right. Yeah. There are people that, for some reason, started, started wearing parrot heads, oh, yeah. right? Or, or grass skirts and uh, coconut bras, and that's just the men. I mean, I've then tried the, a coat. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, uh, it, it, the, the dress up part of it kind of, we, we just noticed it from stage once. It started around Cincinnati, Ohio. It always starts in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> Amazing. Now in the heart of the Midwest, and there <laughs> they were, kind of dressing. 
uh, for the show. And I went, you know, look at this. And actually, Timothy Schmidt was playing in the band at that time, who was in the Eagles. And he said, God, look, they look like dead heads, but with Hawaiian shirts, like parrot heads. And I said, there's the term. So Timothy right. gets the credit for, for naming them. And then it just kind of caught on, and, and I kind of just went along for the ride. And we just, you know, they're the audience, and you play for them. They're paying the rent, so whatever they want to do, But they what's get. this business of people constructing? Um, I've heard that, that people are driving in trucks and, and, and building swimming pools in the back of their trucks so they can sit in the water and watch a concert. They come at about, they'll come from anywhere from 10 to 12 in the day and just camp out. And then so in the, in the parking lots, they've on their own decided to kind of reenact songs or whatever. Yeah, there's, there's, we were in uh, Irvine, California, and there was a, two pickup trucks. One had a volcano in it, and then a, a sliding A volcano. Board. Yeah, there's a song called Volcano. <clears throat> so they had a volcano in there, and then they slid into the other pickup truck that had a swimming pool in it and a beach. And I went, you know, you have to go out there and give them medals or something for that, you know? It's a, Isn't that violating some kind of highway law? <laughs> <laughs> a pickup truck with a volcano in the back? No, the sharks going down the road are probably in violation of highway law. But yeah, you see, you, you see a lot of uh, vehicles with big fins on the top. That's another song. Fins. Right, right. So you, now, you're just thinking of, now you're just thinking of songs that will create weird sets, probably, right? Yeah, we will. They're a part of those. Your song, Giant Puppet Breathing Fire. <laughs> you know. Well, I got a new one I'm writing called Hey You Out of the Gene Pool, so I think that'll work somewhere. About that, you know? <laughs> Look forward to that. You know what you're obsessed? <laughs> you're obsessed with, uh, it's very, you, you love to sail, you love to fly. Everyone knows that about you. You're, you're obsessed, I was reading the book today, with latitude and longitude. You like to carry one of those global positioning devices yep. wherever you go and figure out exactly the latitude and longitude of your favorite stuff. What kind of stuff are we talking about? Uh, restaurants, uh, fishing spots, roads. They got them now where you can find, you know, there's the little map of Manhattan on them. Now you can find your way around Manhattan if you don't know how to get here. But if you like a restaurant, you'll figure out it's 41, 32, 55 yeah, I longitude. I, I like latitude. Just in case everything else breaks, you can find, you can get back there, you know? You must be fun when you get into a New York City cab. You know? <laughs> Where do you want to go? Uh, 15, 35, 16 longitude. Yeah. Probably, oh, Staten yeah. Island. Yeah. Probably yeah. these days, they, they know them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they know exactly where we're going. The, uh, you know, I was enjoying, uh, you write, obviously, but not just books. You're, you're, uh, you're a journalist as well. You wrote some... Some, uh, some articles, some dispatches for Rolling Stone. I did. Uh, from, you were actually one of the journalists who went to Cuba to cover the Pope and Fidel Castro getting together, yeah. right? Yeah, and uh, I was there as an, as an ex-altar boy. I thought I was, you know, good for the job, and I got the job and went from Key West to Cuba. And, of course, that was the day that <clears throat> the big event occurred in Washington. When yeah. Monica achieved her 15 minutes of fame. Right. And so, uh, you know, I couldn't believe it. All the network uh, anchors were bailing to go to this story. And so I was kind of there covering the Pope by myself. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so Brokaw, rather, all those gone, people were here. You know, you know everybody's here. Monica. Yeah, they're gone. And, and then it? suddenly they realize... Yeah, we've got the Pope and Fidel, two of, whether you like them or not, two of the most interesting men in America. But boy, they're packing up, heading to Washington to see what's going on. Here. <laughs> <clears throat> they probably saw you and, like, put on parrot heads. And... Yeah, you know, and I'm not seeing... I'd seen that kind of activity in rock and roll for 30 years. It kind of goes around, you know, so I just kind of stayed in Cuba. You know so. what's fascinating is you live in Key West. You've actually had uh, boat people, yeah. people from Cuba who are fleeing to come to America, have uh, landed <laughs> oh on the beach in front of your house and walked up and knocked on the door. Well, right? They, they did. They actually, they did. They didn't knock on the They were in the canal. I thought they were divers or something, and uh, actually we found out about it, and we, uh, I brought them in. And uh, after they were processed and all, I did give them a Jimmy Buffett tape because I knew once they got to Miami, all they'd hear was Julio. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just, here, have this. can you imagine what it must be like to be in Cuba? You get on a boat, you flee for your life, you come to America, you knock on a door, and Jimmy Buffett answers? Well, hey, have one of my tapes, you know? No, they, they must think, this is an amazing country. I actually kept up with them, yeah. <laughs> I gave them tapes and coffee yeah, and, and Coca. The Cokes were more, um, they seemed to be more impressed with Coca Cola than Jimmy Buffett music at the time. Right, yeah. right. Well, you've but, been deprived. Uh, Cuba was fascinating. And then my next assignment is John Glenn's Rocket Launch. Oh, I'm I talked about that, that in the monologue very yeah. respectfully. I got to meet him a couple weeks ago in Washington. <laughs> you were very respectful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, a, a Pirate Looks at 50 is in bookstores right now. It's topping both the fiction and nonfiction list. And of Thank course, you. the latest CD, Don't Stop the Carnival, is out there and it's available. Really cool meeting you. Thank, Thank you very you, much for coming on the program. Pleasure. Jimmy Buffett, everybody.